Time for the Mini Doge ASIC Miner Review and Teardown. Hey everyone, here's the Mini Doge. This is the way it actually comes in the mail, directly in this box. Not much to show. Yes, I have already opened it, but I'm gonna open it again for you. And this is the way it actually comes. Foam on the top. Gold shell. Upon receipt of this miner, please check for completeness as soon as possible. Now this kit that I bought, this is the one without the power supply because I plan on eventually moving this to my mining closet and powering it directly through one of my server PSUs. So I didn't spend the extra $100 for a power supply. Comes with the unit itself. And that's it. I mean, it's really nicely packed in here. I don't think there's anything else on the bottom. Nope. It's a sturdy box. It's definitely better than any Amazon box you're ever going to get, especially considering it needs to ship from uh, Hong Kong. So let's get this out of the way and actually take a look at the unit itself. Now, when I went through the order process for this, they had a big drop. They had, I think it was like a thousand of the regulars and a thousand of the Voss coins. And I missed getting the regulars. So I end up getting a Voss coin edition. Same price, no big deal. It just has his label on it. This one has the Voss coin with the mini doge dogs and everything, the rocket, and the other sign just has his label. Now the unit itself, of course, two 80 millimeter fans. Don't worry, they're not deltas. We'll find that out later. They're not like the typical ASIC that whines like a little jet, actually a big jet engine. So this is meant to be a quiet, low powered household ASIC miner. That's the whole purpose of it. On the back of it, literally just grates, reset button, ethernet, and six pin PCIe connection. That's it. So let's go ahead and get this hooked up to a regular ATX power supply just for testing. So for testing today, we have an EVGA Supernova 750 watt platinum power supply. And nothing is connected to the 24 pin except for a test block, which basically just powers it on. And we have a single PCIe six or six plus two. So that's all we're gonna to need to power it. On the bottom here, let me get that out of the way. PCIe six pin, plug that in. Regular ethernet, that's all you need. So let's go ahead and turn on the power. Quick little ramp up, that's it. You see we're only pulling seven watts, gives a few minutes, seconds for it to start up. Yep, now it's testing the fans. I think that's pretty, about as loud as it really gets. Nope, okay, it still goes up a little bit more. Yeah, that's as loud as it gets, which is still way less than a regular ASIC. But in my testing so far, it almost never runs that fast. It actually runs very slow on the fans because it wants to be quiet. The only way it's going to run that fast is if you're in a room that's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can see we're pulling about 16, 19, 20 watts. I think it's getting ready to actually start mining. It's connected. We do have network activity here. And we're up to 142 watts, 150, 168. She should stop right around 190 or so. Because right now this is set for balanced mode. Which is not hash rate, but not power saving. It's right in the middle. Yep, about 189 watts. So, let's jump on over to the uh, local webpage for this and take a look at it. Now, I've already got my unit set up on my network, but when you get yours, since this is not exactly an exhaustive review on how to set it up, just once you plug it in and get it powered up, give it a minute or two for it to ramp up, and then go to find.goldshell.com, and this website will look on your local network and give you the IP address, so this way you can locally access it. So, you click this, it will go to your local IP address for this unit, and now you can configure it. 
Okay, so you can literally... Actually, no, you can't even see it because it's behind my face. But it's literally just started up. There's no hash rate yet. But you can see she's starting to warm up. She's at 49.4 degrees. Should stop somewhere around like 75 to 78 degrees C because that's just the way it is. And the fans are at 2,880 RPM. They do go up to about 4,800, and that's where the, that's as loud as it gets with that self-test that you just heard a second ago. But normally, once it gets stabilized in balance mode, the I think my room is 73 degrees Fahrenheit right now. That's it. This should calm down once it's fully ramped up and it's running down to maybe like 1,500 RPM. It'll be nice and quiet. So let's give it a few seconds. And now you can see the hash rate just starting to show up here. Don't worry about the hardware error part here. That calms down after a few minutes. As long as it doesn't really go over 5%, you're okay. But long term, usually less than 1% after it's been running for a few hours is optimal. So don't be alarmed if you all of a sudden start it up and start seeing like 3 4% hardware error. Don't worry. That's normal for this okay so we've let it run for 11 minutes now and you can see the hardware error rate has come down our average is right around 160 mega hash 161 give or take you can see the histogram is starting to be populated and the temperature is actually still coming up it will eventually come up to about 75 to 77 degrees c and you can see the fans have really come down and i doubt if i be quiet you can really hear it anymore it's barely aud audible at all. I mean, yeah, it's nice and quiet already. And it might go down a little bit more to like maybe about 1400 RPM or so once it gets to a nice equilibrium on balanced mode. And right now, if I bring over the kilowatt, we can see we are pulling 193 watts from the wall on balance. So let's try, let's go to minor. And you can see right here, power plant, set for balance mode. Inside here, you also have hash rate mode, which pushes it, and then low power mode. So I'm going to put this right here, so this way you guys can see it. And we're going to click hash rate mode and apply it. And the fans immediately start ramping up, and you can see about an extra 40 to 50 watts right there. And she settles at 236 watts from the wall so let's go back let's sit for five minutes and see where the hash rate sits there okay so it's been about five minutes again and you can see right here the hardware error is still going down which is perfect it should settle less than one percent this is a running average just so you know and we can see it's come up to 170 but if we look at the histogram we've gone from around 160 to almost 180 so You've gained roughly 20 mega hash for 50 watts. Uh, that's why I like running balance mode. But just to show, we are still... Hey, get over here. There we go. We are still running 238 watts. So, let's go back and test... If I can get this thing to sit straight. Uh, test power saving mode. Help if I click on the right screen. There we go. Hash rate mode. Let's go to low power mode now. And we apply the fans ramp up and you can see we've gone down to 162 watts now being pulled so let's let it run for another five minutes and see where it settles down okay so we are at 24 minutes running low power mode hardware error is now down to two percent and still working its way down Temperature still hasn't stabilized yet. It's, it will eventually get up to like 75 to 77 degrees. And the fans are running real low. And you can see we're running about 150 mega hash on this. Remember, this is a running average. So it would take some time for this to actually work its way down to the true average. And I'm not going to spend a couple hours on each uh, power setting just to figure out exactly where it's at. But it gives you a good ballpark. So... Also, we can see we are still pulling 158, 159 watts. So now I've shown you how it works, the different wattages. I prefer the run balanced mode. 
uh, it seems to give you a good amount of hash rate for a little bit of power. Going up to full hash rate, I mean, if you got free power, go for it. Even at my mining closet where I get five cents a kilowatt hour, I think I'm going to run this at balanced mode just so it doesn't burn extra heat or extra electricity. And running low power mode, that's great for ultimate efficiency and if you have really high electric rates. So let's turn this off and let's tear into it and actually see what's inside this box. So let's open it up. Now to open this up, you can open it up on both sides if you wanted to. It's best to open it up on the fan side and you'll see why in a second. So let's just get a regular Phillips head. And take the four screws out. Okay, so open this part up and we can see we have some snow fan. DC 12 volt, 0 0.35 amp fans. Now if we start pulling the board out, we'll see we have two fan connectors, which we can disconnect. These are just standard, regular motherboard style fans. Oops. So the fans will be easily replaceable. If you want to put RGB ones in here or these fans just died, you can find a close spec and replace these in the future if need be. So inside here, this is still a little warm from it running. Nothing else, that's just the case. And we have the ASIC itself. Now if we turn this around, you see heat sinks all along the back here. One big heat sink on the front. The main board itself for the ASICs has the actual power going to itself. And then this little daughter board, which has the processor, which I'll pull off in a second, has your micro SD slot, which currently is not being used for anything and your networking. Other than that, there really isn't too much to it. So let's pull off this controller board. Ooh, that heat sink's still a little warm. And there we go. It's basically just an ARM CPU with some RAM and some flash storage. That's all it is. A couple of voltage regulators. Not much else there. So that's basically all there is inside of a mini doge ASIC miner. You have the one ASIC board itself and the controller. That's all there is. So this is my take on a review of the Gold Shell mini doge miner. It's small, it's quiet, it's relatively low powered, it's cute, it's got little doggies on the side of it. And for the $700 version like I have with no power supply makes two dollars a day after power roughly at current market rates so that gives you about a 350 day ROI yes that is a bit of a long ROI but one of the great things about this is Dogecoin's probably not going anywhere anytime soon and Litecoin's been around forever so once you set this up and it's running it's basically a set it and forget it and just let it keep going. And this will run most likely for years and you will ROI on it and you will still make a good profit on it over years. It's not a quick profit, but you will definitely make a profit running this unit. If you have any questions or comments, by all means, go ahead, leave them down below or even better, come say hi to myself and everyone else over at the Mining Misfit Discord. The link for that will be down in the video description. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, please. Share this around the mining community, and I will see you on the next video.